guys, welcome back. Um, I feel like I want to say Happy New Year, but by the time I publish this video, it's going to be like halfway through January. So today I'm going to do another kind of baking science video. And again, this is related to eggs. I've done a couple of videos on eggs already, but this one is specifically about egg coagulation. Now, I know that's quite a big word, but don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Now, I'm going to talk about this in relation to a basic egg custard to make it a little bit more easier to understand. An egg custard is kind of like a sauce made up of eggs, cream or milk and sugar. This is thickened by the coagulation of egg proteins through heating. These unfolded proteins move throughout the liquid and start to bond with each other, i.e. stick together. This is also sometimes called protein aggregation. When the egg proteins are properly aggregated, these form a really strong but flexible network that can trap water and other liquids. As you continue to heat the egg mixture, you get more protein aggregation and the network becomes firmer and tighter. Eventually, the proteins can overcoagulate and they start to squeeze out liquids, kind of like when you get a sponge and squeeze out the water. We sometimes refer to overcoagulation as curdling, and this is where you get like bits of kind of solid gel within a kind of liquidy mixture. Um, this may well have happened to you if you've ever made an egg custard before. Generally it's a good thing to slow down the process of coagulation because this reduces the risk of over coagulation and produces the smoothest custard and a tender and moist baked product. So I'm now going to go through a few things that will slow down the rate of coagulation and reduce the risk of over coagulation. The first thing you can do is dilute the egg with milk, water or some other ingredient. The dilution of egg proteins with milk, sugar or cream makes it more difficult for the proteins to bump into each other and aggregate. When aggregation does occur, you get a smoother, more tender product as the liquid is trapped in the coagulated protein network. The second thing you can do is to slow down the rate of cooking. When you cook the egg mixture too quickly, the proteins don't have time to properly unfold and so they don't bond with each other as well. This means they won't thicken or gel as easily. For example, if you cook a basic egg custard sauce over a high heat, it's very likely to curdle and burn and it might not thicken properly. The best thing you can do to maximise thickening is to cook your custard over a low heat while continually Stirring. The third factor is related to the part of the egg used. Egg yolks coagulate at a higher temperature than egg whites, making them less likely to weep and curdle. If you remember from my previous video that I did on eggs, egg yolk proteins are lipoproteins bonded to fats and emulsifiers. These fats and emulsifiers slow down the process of protein aggregation. So therefore by adding more yolks to your mixture, you can slow down the process of coagulation. The fourth factor is sugar. Sugar prevents egg protein coagulation in custard and baked goods by preventing the proteins from unfolding. If the proteins are slow to unfold, they will be slow to coagulate unless you raise the temperature. Therefore, sugar can help prevent curdling. If you've ever made a quiche before, you may find that it curdles more easily than like a basic egg custard, and this is because it doesn't contain any sugar. In baked goods, sugars slow the formation of egg structure, and if enough is present, coagulation stops completely, and your baked good can appear uncooked, even if you've baked it for a really long time. The fifth thing is lipids, i.e. fats, oils, and emulsifiers. These interfere with the process of egg coagulation, and so tenderise custards just as much as they tenderise baked goods. They directly interfere with egg proteins in the same way that they interfere with gluten proteins. Custards made with a high amount of lipids from like cream and egg yolks are generally softer, smoother, and creamier. The sixth thing is acids. Acids speed up the process of egg coagulation, which means that it happens at a lower temperature than what it would normally. Acid can come from lemon juice or other fruit juices, raisins or other fruit, and also cultured dairy products such as buttermilk and yogurt. If you are using acidic ingredients in your custard or baked goods, make sure you carefully monitor your cooking or baking times. The seventh and final thing is starch. 
Starch interferes with egg coagulation, slowing down the process. This can be seen if you compare the cooking of a pastry cream to that of a basic egg custard sauce. Pastry cream is essentially the same kind of thing as an egg custard, except that it contains added corn flour or flour. When you make pastry cream, you heat it and boil it for around two minutes. Now, if you did this with a normal egg custard sauce, there is no way it would survive two minutes of boiling. The main reason why pastry cream can be boiled without curdling is because it contains added starch. Now, there are other factors that may affect egg coagulation, but these are the main ones. I am going to do another more in-depth video about custards and why they might curdle, but I thought I'd give you a brief overview for now. I really hoped you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Remember, if you've got any questions, please do pop them in the comments below and I will more than happily answer them for you. If you liked this video, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can make more content like this and continue to share my business journey with you from my little cake shop here in the UK. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you very soon. Bye.